Man, y'all ever seen a girl with a BBL and like nothing was BB'd or L'd? <laughs> I don't even yeah, know I'll talk about that. it after the show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> BBL or L. So, well, wait, what was left? Just, just. I a... mean, that's the problem. Everything was left. It was oh. not successful. Still big. Still big. <laughs> Mm. Got to run through a couple more passes after that. A big bo. All right. <laughs> False advertising. False Look. advertising. All right, I'm running it now. What is going on, family? Thank you so much for tuning in to another great episode of In Your City here on WNSB Hot 91, the soul of VA. Look, you're joining with your favorite crew. I'm your guy, Arrington Gavin. With me always is my family, comedian Ciroc Fox. Yep. We, got, we got Hustle Queen, Miss Michelle Young. Hey. And our awesome producer, Mr. Cam Golly. Yo, 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 yo. Fam, what's going on with everybody today? Doing good, man. My brother just woke up from his coma. I'm pretty excited. I'm actually sending him a song we worked on as we are working unprofessionally. So uh, there's that. <laughs> well, that's a blessing, man. That's a blessing. That's all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been in a coma for five days, man. So wow. we've been pretty depressed wow. around here, but he's good now. Okay. Well, man, we wow. like, like I said, great praise report right there. We got to clap it up for that. Great praise report. Mm -hmm. Great praise report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, Michelle, how's how you doing, Miss? Doing good. Just just working, <laughs> showing up on time. Showing up at the wrong place at the wrong. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Ken, what about you, brother? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Man, well, look, y'all. I have got to. Did y'all watch Club Shay Shay? The 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 episode with Cat Williams. Did y'all watch? It? <laughs> not, not in its entirety yet, but I I, I watched the whole two hours. I, it's three. It's three. It's three. Oh, it was three. I didn't even notice. I watched yeah, the whole yeah. thing. It, it was, was like juicy. Show. So yeah. for for those who are uh, unfamiliar with what we're talking about, look, you need to stop living under a rock. It was one of the most viewed uh, Club Shay Shay episodes of all time. I'm talking about first night. The most. It was. Yeah. He passed yeah. everybody up in a day. Yep. Mm. It's crazy. I know the first nine hours it was like a million and a half views, and I was just like, okay. Oh, it's at twelve million one. now. That is wow. crazy. That is it's crazy. Well, that was the last time I seen. That was the last time I looked. So I haven't uh, looked this morning or last night, but it was a 12 million crazy. views. So, so, so Club Shay Shay uh, is hosted by Hall of Fame uh, football player and media personality uh, Shannon Sharp. Very successful podcast where he sits down with public figures in entertainment, sports, you name it. And a while back, he had Cat Williams, comedian, actor, well known dude. And Cat just went off. He was, I mean, exposing everybody. And we were, people were so confused. I mean, at least I was. I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, he mentioned Ricky. He mentioned, I mean, who else? Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, Cedric T. Tanner, uh, Faze on Love. Nope. Nobody, everybody was, was like, nobody was safe. Nobody was safe. Use a fat face on lie is probably one of the most, it's going to be one of the most used <laughs> sayings of 24. I'll guarantee you. We're only a couple days in. Use a fat face on lie is my new favorite. Why you BSing line? <laughs> <laughs> One that got me when he's like, Cedric doesn't even have a special on Tubi and Netflix. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, oh. he's like, let me say that again. Oh no, God. he said Netflix first, Tubi was second. Netflix. That's why I hit oh. order. <laughs> Netflix or Tubi. Or Tubi. <laughs> and then the man said, I was about to punch him. In the gut, and I, I was on the. He was gonna pop I, that belly. I'm telling what? you, this dude, he is probably one of the funniest dudes on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I gotta ask y'all, like, what was y'all first like thought process? You know, of the you know clips you watch or the the show you watch. I start with Sarah because you you know you watch it, the, watch the whole thing just like myself. What was your first thought process, especially being a comedian professionally as well? What was your thought process? Um, 
Well, Cat Williams is already known for being one of the realest comedians in the game. He is what, if you were a, a rapper, you would call him an independent artist. And he is one of the highest pinnacles you can reach as an independent artist. I follow those same footprints, uh, those same footsteps when it comes to comedy. I'm also, um, I don't get too much time in actual comedy clubs because of the way I do business. And uh, that means I'm, I'm getting money on the front end, back end, or in the middle somewhere. You're not just going to pay me to, you know, show up for only, you know, for $75. It's insane. But, yeah. so, Cat Williams is one of those comedians that recognizes that, that pay disparity. And he changed mm -hmm. how he produces shows. He changed how other people um, come at professional shows. He even slides people, if you're on a certain level, or if you hear about you... Um, not getting paid for a show or something like that, he'll randomly send you money. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he's always had one of the top dog reputations in stand-up comedy. And I think people need to realize that when we speak on him today and when other people, you know, debate this between the, the comedians in this world, everybody know who the real is. When mm. the ones who's up and coming, the B-list celebrities, the Zs, my my status of celebrity, everyone who's in the comedy game knows exactly who's the top dog. And then, like he said, who uh, had to take a few shortcuts to get to the top. Like mm -hmm. I said before, though, I mean, I go to Diddy's party. I, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> so if Diddy, you watch it. <laughs> Arrington, what is the rock? What is he? Nasty. <laughs> nasty. Nasty. <laughs> I need to have. I need to have like a like a. Button. You need a button. Like, we're, we're, that's we're not gonna, fair. We're gonna I'm not it. saying Diddy, Diddy. I'm not saying the Diddy that we know. That, the Diddy that we know today is going to jail. So <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> so my my biggest uh, quote takeaway was him saying, looking at Shannon, taking a sip, and saying, "You have an unnatural allegiance to losers. That is not like you." <laughs> I was done. I was done. <laughs> I had to cut it off for a few minutes. That's how you knew he wasn't lying. Holy crap. <laughs> I was absolutely Ooh. done. <laughs> there were so there were so many quotes. One that I jotted down was when he said, "Losers are not allowed to rewrite history." I'm like, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. I said I got to write that down. So Ciroc is always wrote. talking about bars from comedians and just people in general. He was dropping he consistently the lot. whole interview. But we we would be remiss if we don't discuss like he he talked about like all the good stuff and all the calling out and all that but the man was doing a lot of lying too <laughs> he was he was he was the man was doing seven a years lot old in college it's crazy and not I making do. a single headline uh, uh, he didn't years, make a like three years old i had a great reading level i read about three thousand not and, um... that man didn't make a front page of a news cover he didn't the the college didn't say like, hey, this is our first seven year old <laughs> alumni. No, we would have. My man said it. he saw doctors. It was like, ah, this ain't for me. <laughs> Literally in my head, I'm like, first of all, what this was the guy that got hit, you know beat by like a seventh grader. Like we all remember, and like he was tussling. First of all, ho 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That team is bigger than me and you. Don't play like. <laughs> Hey, don't do that. Like, I hate like, when people. Come on now. <laughs> that boy was big. Now he wasn't heavy set, but that was a big teenager. He, Man, he that give me a run for my that money. That perm wasn't even fixed. That perm was. <laughs> he was. He was in. A cobra clutch talking about young man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a celebrity. Mm -mm. <laughs> and then on top of that, it's like I've been. You know, he said I've been in jail thirty times. I'm like. This man is no activist. The only people I know that get arrested at least 30 times is an activist. What like like we have to understand like oh, not only was he you, controversial, but he's had he's had his you know, he's had his issues, right? But you know, to him, Wrong. Like, what has he been arrested for that stuck? He's never been to prison. He's been to jail. I've been to jail and my record is clean. I don't have a single times, mark on my 30 times. 30 times is right. Think about how many times we've we've accused Cat of being on crack. How many times we've accused Cat on being crazy, da 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 And when really, he just got caught in a situation that anybody could have got caught in. He hasn't, he doesn't have a substantial record. You can make that face all you want, but he ain't got convicted of nothing. Like I said, 30, look, three times okay, four, maybe. 
30? Nah. What has he? What does he do? What he go to jail for? He what do you go to jail for? Thirty times. I don't know. I'm just but you said. Times. Times. <laughs> but I'm saying he had. I mean, it might be more than that. He might be forgetting <laughs> the times he got thrown in the paddy wagon. But the point is, there's no charges to stick in. Like he's not. He's right. never been to prison for longer than he never been to prison, and he's never been to a holding cell longer than anybody who had to go to the back and get sent to jail. Jail mm -hmm. like uniform jail. He got sent to the place where you still in your own clothes. So, and if there's no charges, if the, his record is clean, if every time he gets, you know, thrown in jail and then they say, sorry, my bad, whose fault is it really? He's not as crazy as you think. That's why I'm on his side. Uh, all right. I think, I think crazy with 30, arrested 30 times is a bit crazy for me, for me, in my opinion, if it, if I'm, but I'm when you can't tell me what them arrests for. Okay, well, look, don't next, my next homework, I'm going to pull up with the record <laughs> and I'm going to be like, Sarah, all right, this one's going to have a little rap sheet. <laughs> gun charges. You know what, Michelle? You know what, Michelle? You said what? Most likely gun charges. If you're a comedian, mm -hmm. the most thing you probably going to get is gun charges because uh, mm -hmm. we carry we yeah, carry everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Man. I guarantee yeah. there's a whole bunch of gun charges on his. Could be cool. Michelle, what was, your, what was your thought process? Oh, what was your thought process, you know, while you were watching this uh, or seeing some clips? I mean, I had popcorn. I was ready to go. <laughs> I had, I was sipping my wine. It, I was laughing at a lot of stuff he said. But then, you know, I just, for me, I'm like, why now? Like, I keep asking that question, like, why now? And obviously not everything he was saying was true, but I think there's a lot of truth in Well, he got he, he got spirited saying. from the Ricky Smiley interview that aired recently. Yeah, that's people what, brought up his name. Tipped, that's what tipped him over the scale. Oh, so that's what... Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. People kept bringing him up, thinking Cat Williams wasn't gonna say nothing, and we were all kikiing and laughing at Why these jokes. And people that? were sliding yeah. because he's he don't do interviews like that. Cat Williams yeah. don't do interviews that much. Yeah, that's what was so shocking about it. I was like, Cat Williams doing? He did an interview. <laughs> well, look, look, fam, look, fam. We gonna continue this convo on the show a little. It's about that time for one of our favorite, well, our only favorite segment here on the show. <laughs> it's time for Ciroc. What you think? It's time. It's, it's, it's time. It's time for. It's time for Ciroc. What you think? All right, seven five seven. I woke up late. I'm a little groggy. I still got the eye boogers in my eyes. But guess what? I'm gonna spit a few bars for you on this glorious Sunday afternoon, or. Saturday, or I don't know when I don't know. I don't know what we do on today. Anyway, <laughs> um, every comedian worth his salt, unfortunately, has had his jokes stolen before. There, I'm telling you, if you reach a certain level, there is not one comedian that's on this level or beyond that has not got a joke stolen. That's just how it is. The game is rough out here, and people will take your material across the country, repeat it like it's theirs, and then when they come back to you, they look at you crazy. Like uh, you, you coming up with some imaginary beef or something, and it's uh, it's one of the most frustrating things where you can be a comedian when someone tries to steal your bars. However, the Ciroc, what you think today is the opposite. Someone asked me, Ciroc, have you ever got accused of stealing a joke? Now let me let me let me build myself up for a second. My reputation is so good that they didn't say, did I ever steal a joke? It was, have I ever been accused? Don't get the game twisted. <laughs> now, the answer is yes, I have. I have been accused of stealing a joke before. Let me look at the camera when I say this one, because this is something that I have passion about. I was accused of stealing a joke maybe a year ago. Now, the person who I stole this joke from, I haven't seen perform for a year. But um, when I heard through it, you know, I, I got a lot of reputation. I mean, a lot of friends in the game. And when one of the people came to me and said, hey, did you steal a joke from such and such? When they named the person one, our comedy styles is so different that I was like, what? And immediately, this is something to me is one of the biggest, you like, red flag, get them out the game type things that you can be accused of. Still in a joke to me is like, whoo, it's a big deal. So if I'm getting accused of one, oh my goodness, I'm going to find out who it was, what joke it was. Uh, uh, when do they think I did it? Where it sat? Anything like that. So when I found out who accused me, I went to their very next show that I knew about. 
pulled up solo dolo. I went to their show. Oh no, my wife was with me. So you know I wasn't coming on no 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 enemy shit, some enemy stuff. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. coming up on some. All right, let's try to figure this out. And so I watched the comedian do the set. I didn't recognize a single joke. I didn't recognize a single joke. I'm thinking, all right, most comedians around here just repeat the same things that they always, you know what I mean? There's not a lot of comedians who do new sets every single time. So mm-hmm. chances are, if he was to say a joke, I would hear something that would, you know, that would bring a bell on something that I may have said. And so I listened to the comedian set. I heard something about uh, two big people uh, making love. And I said, that might be similar to a freestyle that I did, you know, a year ago or half a year ago, something like that. So I went to the green room. I stepped in the green. Look, you're not going to accuse me of nothing without yo, we having this conversation. So after the show was over, I went to the green room. I sat down with the comedian and I said, look, I listened to your set. And I, the only joke that I can think that you thought I stole was the big person joke because I'm a skinny guy. I was roasting big people. This is on a comedy special that I have um, with Stephanie and Cakes. This is mm-hmm. a very successful stand up comedy special that I released. It was a three featured. It was an amazing thing. And right now it's on its way to go. So it's doing real good. And uh, we talked about it. And when me and him ran through it, I say, bro, I get what you thought, but one, I thought we were on a relationship where we can just call each other at all times about any problems. You've been on my show multiple times. You've been a guest on my, my In Your City show at the time. where It was just a solo In Your City show. Multiple times. Why wouldn't you just say something right away? Two, I haven't been to one of your live shows in God knows when. I haven't seen you perform in a long time. And I've been on the road nonstop. How in there? How in what world? And then another thing was when you listen to the way I told the joke, completely different. It's just one of those things where, hey, did anybody ever go shopping? Like, it's one of those, everyone goes shopping. Everyone you know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone goes shopping. Now, yeah. granted, that's not what it was. But you can imagine the noise that happens when two big people make noise. You, it's just something that's common knowledge. You know it's not quiet. You know, if you have two big people in the bedroom, you know it ain't gonna be no, no, no mice. <laughs> no, it's gonna let, sound let, like some stuff. And so that's say, the, the bed gonna be creaking. The bed he, gonna be creaking. He was not the first person to make a big person, <laughs> big people smile. I've seen yeah. it on Comic View. I've yeah. seen it on Dev Comedy Jam. So like many. we've seen it for years. See, like it's, I, and yeah. I didn't even know that. I honestly Absolutely. thought what I said was a blurp in my head. Like yeah. I just thought that was a random noise that I could imagine what big people make with it. But yeah. it changed our dynamic forever. Once wow. he accused me, I came to him. I had a conversation. I sat down with myself when I got home and I thought, man, why wouldn't he call me? What type mm. of friend would accuse me of something like that, knowing how serious I take my craft, knowing how yeah. serious I go when it comes to uh, original content? Why wouldn't he call me and ask? Yeah. And I can explain exactly my thought process when it came from. And then he could have said when he said the joke and I would have been able to, to like when he created the joke, I would be able to tell him, sir, I haven't seen you do stand up since this last set. Mm. That was that was a long time mm-hmm. ago. How would mm-hmm. I steal something I've never seen you perform? It was the whoo. Anyway, <laughs> fast forward to now, I just decided. You know, I was like, you know what? The best way for me to stay from those accusations is to just not hang out with the people who accuse me. Hey, if you think I'm stealing your material, that is perfectly fine and dandy. You ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to see me ever again at a show, at a conference, a meeting, a booking, or nothing. You ain't got to worry about me stealing nothing of yours because we ain't going to never see each other again. We ain't got to worry about nothing. (laughs) I'm telling you. It's just, and I don't know how y'all feel about if someone accuses you of stealing content, but for me, that is how I feed my family. That mm-hmm. one accusation could have ruined my career. Now, granted, I don't have enough weight in my name for people to be like, Negro, please. But what if it was somebody more famous? What if it was yeah. somebody like Cedric the Entertainer who copied a joke after me or did a joke that's similar to mine, and then they see me, and next thing you know, he stole a joke. That can mm-hmm. ruin your career. Yeah. Cedric the Entertainer is not going to get... 
like, yeah, the old school people are gonna book them. You know, like you got the Q Dogs, uh, uh, special events, and you got, mm -hmm. you know, college events where the uh, that's led by the older alumni. So you got those older people who's gonna book said because of history. But mm -hmm. this younger generation, these younger promoters, these younger show producers, they're not going to book set anymore because of this mm -hmm. event. He can only get shows off his name now, not from off the strength of his comedy. People might mm -hmm. argue that, but that's just facts. What do y'all think about content stealing and the accusations that Cat threw around? So he 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 showed a lot of proof of it, and and you know the mm -hmm. internet sleuths got on it right away. And, yeah. Oh yeah, the Mark showed, Curry and everything. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, we can go back to Carlos Mencia, uh, who basically got burned in the comedy game because he was stealing. Um, but the story he st he told was he thought that was just like a way of the world rite of passage because I think someone took something from him, so it was like a pay it forward type of thing. So it's it's really interesting to see how the the dynamic changes when we're talking about different segments within the, the world of comedy. Um, I would think that it would be frowned upon, just like stealing someone's lyrics or yeah. anything mm -hmm. a, a, along those lines. Like your comedy, in my opinion, should be something that's near and dear to your heart, something that you your struggle, your wins, or whatever the case may be. So, like for you to look at someone else and say, I'm going to take that. I'm going to remix it and make it a part of my set. I think it's corny, uh, but that's just my personal opinion. I got a question, though, Sirach. Mm -hmm. Like, is it a common thing in comedy for other comedians to say, like, recycle a joke mm -hmm. from other comedians? Not stealing, but recycle, nah. because, again, that's, like, with, but no, well, no, what I'm saying is every, like you said, no, you have, you're not the first one person or, like, Cam, I said, you're not, you've heard, like, fat jokes before. You've heard, right. um, I know is a joke, uh, the joke between the HBCU marching band and the PWI marching band. The the, the rhythm is always going right. to be the... Those are, called, the those are called stock jokes. Stock jokes are the jokes that used to be told back in like the 70s and 80s. And okay. they get passed from generation to generation. You tell and those remix. stock jokes amongst peers. You tell those stock jokes amongst family members. You don't make you don't HBO do specials telling yeah. stock jokes. I got, when you I hit a you. certain level... When you hit a certain level of, of professionalism, mm -hmm. when you're on the stage, that whole you remember the you know that joke about the when a chick crossed the road? The chick crossed the road is a stock joke. A stock mm -hmm. joke that's been told time and time and time again, remixed and flipped and cooked different and added different recipes. Yeah, they're funny, but when you are displaying your talent. You don't say those things. I got it's you. like I got you. I got you. telling so Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne the freestyle, and instead of freestyling, they do, um, you know, something that Tupac did the whole time. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, to answer the, to answer your question too about uh, Cedric, I don't think it's really gonna, in my opinion, I don't oh, think it's it really is. gonna affect. I don't think. I don't think so. Because here's the thing. You can't take away the comedic actor for once. He does other stuff than just stand up, right? He ain't now, no good actor. The neighborhood is like <laughs> one of the highest rated shows on CBS right now. Gotta check it out. I ain't never seen the neighborhood a day in my life, and I don't but, know not one person in my dem demographic so. that watch it. I well, let's like do I said, a poll. I guarantee you, nobody in my circle besides you watch the neighborhood. <laughs> Cam, have you ever seen the neighborhood? I just found Michelle, out. Michelle, have you ever seen the neighborhood? No. Babe, okay, that's cool. Babe, that's you cool. ever seen a neighborhood? We can that go. Is cool. <laughs> that is cool. That is cool then. So what 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 Cedric the Entertainer is a good actor? I'm telling you, Se wait, so Johnson's family vacation, all you're telling me his whack like, all his film and what film Johnson Family what Vacation was a whack ass movie. Then what film Why are you looking one? like that? It I'm was saying, a I'm whack ass saying, okay, movie. Name, name cat films, name cats films compared to Cedric's films. Name Cat's films compared to Cedric. That he has School Day scene is one of the most played. iconic scenes of all time. School Day scene is a movie that has Kevin Hart, all, of, all every person of comedy Cat that's Williams, in it, Cat, and Cat we Williams, only know Cat that Williams. one scene. Cat Williams, Cat Ke Williams. What other what other films has he been a lead actor with that he's led in? Not first day. First day he was a supporter actor. Uh, but his uh, argument is actor. he's not getting those lead parts from black producers because he's not playing mm -hmm. those Illuminati games. That's his whole grief. That's his whole grief about it. He's tell he's his whole interviews about why he has to go independent and make his own money a different way because it's a clique of people who's on fake stuff.
that keeps them from from being in lead roles. But every time you see Cat in a movie, it does multiple millions of dollars, and you only remember his scenes. Money Mike is one of the most e iconic comedian actors of all times, and we know every line that he says. A I, pimp I, I named still, Slickback. I still is, people are not getting in China right that, now. In China right now. Credit in my in my. He opinion. sucks. Cedric <laughs> sucks. This is coming that, from an original that's comedian. Opinion. That okay, it's, and that's his opinion too. I'm just saying. Cedric you like you falling. like who Cedric stole from. That's who you like. You like the original people I'm who the content fan. came from. I'm a cat fan. I'm a cat. I'm fan sure you all. are. I'm but saying, you're giving credit to Cedric for not story. writing. You're giving credit to Cedric the Entertainer who ain't I'm entertaining. Not. He ain't got one good song. He ain't got one good acting bone in his body. And he ain't got well, one okay. good solid joke that belongs copy to him. Cat, copy what Cat saying. Like I said. This is Cedric before. Is Every comedian knows this before Cat <laughs> said this. This is a known thing, bro. You're not giving Cedric credit. So for bad. what? Stealing? You're I am giving him credit. <laughs> He's been a bitch nigga for a long time. Y'all just crazy, finding bro. out. You are killing me. You are killing me. You are killing me. Oh, radio. Like because it's like how come it's like people are telling him that his favorite Cedric's hit I guarantee you, your favorite joke of Cedric the Entertainer does not belong to Cedric the Entertainer. Why would I give him credit? I have a favorite joke. All I'm saying is you're just saying he's completely not talented. You defeated a person you don't even know that jokes. You're telling me Cedric is not talented at all is to me complete. No. Bull. That is complete. No, that's my opinion. That's no, complete you can't be talented complete and steal. You can't be talented and steal. What has he done originally? Okay. I will okay. give him credit if okay. you can tell me something you like of his that's original. If you can't, I'll win this argument. I'm sorry. If you can't name something that he liked, that you liked, that he created. Own, okay, we've proven once that he has taken a joke from Cat. Okay, but how do we know that there's that's their original content? How? He I'm stole a joke from Mark Curry. He stole a, cur a joke from... Says but I know Kat? the jokes. No, not just... Let's leave out Cat. Mark Curry's joke that he stole. One, the joke from joke the stock that? joke, joke that he stole. What joke was that? What joke was that? that he stole the Mark Curry joke he stole was the fro joke. The Afro joke that Cedric told is a is a joke stolen from Mark Curry. The joke, the stock joke that we was just talking about, that stock joke that got him on his special in the first place was stolen from a TV sitcom. The joke where he was talking about bubblicious, bombinicious. That's one of people's favorite jokes of his. Yeah. That, that was, was a stolen. Big one. He did that joke almost yeah. verbatim. He got that from that, and designing that's, women. From a, designing women. That's it. And yeah. that was one of the biggest yeah. jokes of his that he got a stand up ovation, uh, ovation so on, and he did it verbatim. Women, I don't know what designing women is. I don't. I never so heard. how are you arguing against me? And I'm giving well, you well, proof. I wasn't born when that show was out, dude. You forget there's an age gap. But I'm telling, telling you, I'm telling, telling you that the reason you like him is that you he stole, bro. You're, you're, you're all, I'm say, all I'm saying, I'm just saying. To say he's not talented is to me is a little harsh. Okay, he stole jokes, but you're saying okay. Then Millie Vanilli is talented. Heard, hold on, I I ain't never heard I ain't never heard a freaking uh uh neighborhood. The show is like on seven seasons on CBS. Y'all probably don't watch CBS shows. I'm just saying he still make he is still making making his money. He has been Millie Vanilli should be platinum, y'all. Millie Vanilli should be the most. No, and according to him, according to him, uh, Millie Vanilli is did. the most. Talented group out there. One of them is still performing. One of them is someone still else's songs. Someone <laughs> else's songs. No, no, I'm not saying he's still he's playing other people's songs. I'm saying he is still performing, doing stuff. There's still a crowd that enjoys that. Say, hey, look, he's a talented cat. Let me continue to support. Fuck them people. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Close it out so we can get to the pod. <laughs> let's, let's get if you fail. don't get let's hold up let's close it 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 if you don't do original jokes original content original anything you cannot be talented i'm sorry the only thing you good at is stealing that is it that is okay. it that is it that's okay. it okay are we in are we all right, y'all. Like close the show. Sure, yeah, close the show out. <laughs> all right, be sure to tune in every Sundays at 12 p.m. here on WNSB Hot 91, the Solar VA. Look, be sure to listen to our podcast available on all podcast platform in your city, iHeart, Spotify, everything. Look, 
We got to move that, on to the that's pod. If we're, that's if we're back next week. <laughs> 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 All right. Are we, are we in the pod now? Are we in the pod? Yeah, because yeah, this, okay. okay. this nigga is tripping. This nigga is tripping. This nigga is tripping. How can you give somebody credit for thievery? Barbershop. Is Barbershop not a good film? He didn't write a single line. He didn't write a single line. He didn't write a single. Ver- he didn't write a sing. He didn't write a single thing. Barbershop not a good film. Was Barbershop not a good film? That's all I asked. It was good. It was good. Did people enjoy his character? Bump if he didn't write his own song. Did people enjoy his character? Yeah. I will say they did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you you just gave the gentleman credit of. So I'm not. I'm not gonna go as far to 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 Arrington's point. I'm not gonna go as far as saying he's talentless. The man does have talent. Now, on the actual stage of comedy, yeah, if you're stealing jokes, then that steals from the whole premise of what you're supposed Welcome to be home, doing. Because you're supposed to be cleaner, speaking to your soul experience. Man, Madagascar. I mean, the but, pay, it, you but, don't have to enjoy the film, but the man has he has a caliber where he truly showed, showed his talent. I'm, again, Never felt I, like that ever. When you okay, know the truth, that's, that's, when you know the truth, opinion. you that's just don't opinion. feel like that. I, I you, respectfully disagree with that. That's okay. If I'm on a comedy show, though, and I hear a joke that I've heard before, I'm going to be like... It's a turnoff. Absolutely. I'm going to be like, why are you... Well, and the reason why, why I brought up the me? HBCU joke was because I've heard a comedian say that on... Uh, he came to my... um. I, I forgot who the guy's name is. Based out of Richmond. I heard that exact same joke about the marching... Literally the exact same marching band. He used the exact same... I'm like... I've heard that joke before, so I'm like, oh. he should okay. be black. Uh, uh, the Whoever it was, he should be black. Bob. The com- what was it? Com- call me by my initials, but what? What did he? What was the? He was the, he was the he freaking said. uncle on the proud family. I mean, if there's more roles that you can see. Well, he, he, he gets, he, but he's, he's these a, roles. He's a comedian legend. He has a name, so he's gonna you like you're just naming roles at this point. You but said that he's a comedic. He's a comedic legend. He's yeah. He's he, a legend. He, he's a legend in the sense that he's a he's a he's a one of the forefathers mm-hmm. or founding fathers of how we look at comedy today and in, in, in you know in black in the black community. I, I give him and that. what I that's why he's it, getting roles. He got those roles from his stand up comedy skill, right? Right. Because For everyone sure. saw him live on stand up no sure. don't make that face. We For wouldn't sure. know who he was no, if I he know, didn't step on that stand up sure. comedy stage. For the sure. only reason he got those roles is because people thought he was hilarious on stage. That's his whole yeah. foundation. Now, yeah. if 75% of his set belongs to other people, you suck. That is what I'm trying to tell you. You don't deserve those roles. He don't deserve to be on Johnson Family Vacation. He don't deserve to be on these these school whatever. Like You can name all the things that he named, but he got these parts because he became an icon on stage. And he became an icon on stage from stealing. Every comedian knows this. Every comedian worth his salt that was born in 1990 or further knows that Cedric was stealing. And nobody called him out from it. It wasn't my place to say anything because, one, I never meet him. I turned down any show that it was offered to me from him. And we wish would I would never cross paths with Sector the Entertainer. Ever. We, like, I, when, when I was growing up in the comedy game, I was in a comedy store in uh, uh, La Jolla, California. This is in Stanford, the San Diego area in California. And some of the, the A-list celebrities were there. And these are people... That like I really looked up to, and when you listen into the conversation of how bad they talking about the kings of comedy, you mm. find out the truth. You find out the mm. Steve Harvey and Bernie, uh, I mean Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer were pure haters of Bernie. That that Steve Harvey or uh, tried to manipulate the audience to try to make it seem like his jokes was just as funny that's, as. They tr- I didn't mean to cut you off, so Rob, that's a story I I do I do believe because I remember hearing Steve and Bernie already having beef when they had the whole yeah. uh, Kings of Comedy tour because <laughs> Steve, was Steve thing- actually wanted to be like the headline. But in my opinion, Steve has never been a great stand up comedian. I'll just put that mm-hmm. I'll put that out right there. I've he, I've never been a fan of him. The one Steve thing still I- too. Yeah. yeah, like I said, Steve I'm not a Steel fan. Too. So I can, I can, it, I can believe documented. that too. Yeah, that's documented. It's documented. Steve um, Steele too, I, and I and I believed him when he talked about his hair piece. I thought I, I thought that was true as well. I didn't. Think All right, now that true. was a shocker. I thought that was real. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the hair was real. Call me stupid. Yo, <laughs> I All right, thought all these the facts hair, coming out. You gonna say the hair was real? Dude, it was like an icon for the black community. It was the perfect. <laughs> 
his hair looked like the we, filter we never on meet my the barber. We ain't never meet the barber. We ain't never meet the barber. <laughs> It yeah. was the, it was the dude. It was the nicest. Guy. I wanted it to be Barbara, real so Barbara, bad. Barber would have been the new, uh, uh, dark and lovely Paul Mitchell. We ain't never knew who the barber was. That's crazy. Just knew he had a you know what's, ass. you know what's funny about the barber thing? Uh, other barbers have came out and said the only way, the only way a barber can be pulling in six thousand dollars a week, cutting three times a week, is if you were maintaining a man unit. That's the only thing that costs that much to maintain. So, so when Steve told on himself, every barber knew after he told that story of how he paid $6,000 to his barber every week. And people wow. were like, well, if you're doing that, that means you are deep. You, you are maintaining a piece. Like, you got multiple hair units that you are. Yeah. You get <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's, let's definitely talk. So we in the pod right now. Let's talk more about the Cat Williams uh, on people that he called out, right? So he called out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, talking about Tyler Perry not being a versatile actor. I think he it was somebody else. I don't, I don't know if it was Mark. He was just talking about the whole wearing putting on a dress. Ricky I'm Smiley and Tyler Perry aren't good in men roles. Yes, That's which is a fact he too. Said, he said Martin um, told him that when I come back, mm -hmm. I'm going to put you in a role, um, and that role was Big Mama's house too. Well, he was like, "Yeah, I got you. You my OG." Blah 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 when he got to read the script it was big mama's house too now this is where the story gets a little he, he was like nah you know what give that to brandon t jackson like i, I, I don't Which know how true that part of it is it like, was an awful movie like it was like the third big mama that was the worst one out of all of them and it's funny because brandon there's a video of brandon t jackson basically saying that that film ruined his career it. i wanted to say he regrets it i want to say like I, that wasn't the only thing that ruined. But if if, if, if you were if you were where you were in Brandon T. Jackson's career, and you get a look from like a comedy guy, like I, I, I I'm not saying that I would have done it, but I understand, especially based on where he was in the type of movies he was in. I I get it. I get mm -hmm. it. You don't go from action. You don't go from action movie. You know, like he he was a supporting action movie guy to Who? the hench Brandon T. Jackson was an action movie. You're, you're not you're not considering Tropic Thunder an action movie, are you? Oh, I forgot about Tropic Thunder. That was a good one. <laughs> I was just making sure. That was a good one. That's an action movie. <laughs> yes, it is. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> any any play that any play that actor that was blackface too. Uh, uh, what I'm just a dude down? playing a dude playing another dude. That's a good. That was it's a lot of guns in that movie. <laughs> What a, he was in Roll Bounce. I remember Roll Bounce. He was in that one. That was probably yeah, so. Nice. The movie to me, the movie that was about to cross him over, the movie why he shouldn't have did Big Ma, uh, Big Mama House was the Brandon T. Jackson uh, Lightning Thief thing. Uh, I mean, it's not called oh, Brandon T. Jackson no, Lightning Percy, Thief. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. Yeah. yeah so yeah, Percy yeah. Jackson and the Lightning Thief, and then Percy mm -hmm. Jackson Lightning Thief Two. Yeah. So or yeah. Trident or something like that. I'm probably messing up the name, so don't don't yell at me if people listen. But mm -hmm. he did those two movies, and they were huge multi-million dollar uh, um, yeah. f funded movies. Sleepers. I don't Sleepers. know how good they did in the box office, but for a comedian to land a role like that, you would regress if you do a movie like Big Mama's House 2. Even or three. with yeah. Martin, though? Because that movie got a There's no look way I would have did that, bro. There's no way that, I would have did that no, no, role. No, I know that you wouldn't have done it, but it was still a huge look for him because that movie was on a main stage platform. I think he, he was, was starstruck. I think he was yeah. starstruck because if you would have read the script, it was so bad. Like the true, script true. log Absolutely. is terrible. I, I still haven't watched movie. the whole movie. I have no mm -hmm. interest in those type of movies. I don't. That's yeah. why I don't watch most of the Medea movies. I can't get with it. It, it just doesn't yeah. do anything for me. Um, I don't know. Is, is Brandon should have read that and no. Uh, is it the yeah. fact seeing a dude dress as a woman in the film? It's, so, like unne the, it's so unnecessary. It's, I mean, it's I just been done. Yeah. Yeah. He, he it's, did it's, at this point, it's a hack. Yeah. A you can look at... Um, oh, go ahead, Michelle. I'm sorry. No, I say I was just pointing out how he said that's very common. Like, he's been offered other roles where he would have to dress like a woman. And, right. you know, he's like, I'm not doing that. Right. Like, but that goes yeah. also can go into another conversation of what we couldn't say on the radio show when he was talking about booty holes. <laughs> was. I was talking about booty holes? No. I was not. 
No. Cat Williams. Oh. <laughs> no. I'm so used to it being me. <laughs> you were in the clear, <laughs> you were in the clear, sir. <laughs> Immediately. That's how you know you talk about booty holes too much. You're you right. Too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> go I ahead. Still, go ahead. I still feel like there's so much in the celebrity world that is surrounded around sex. Like oh, that. Of and, and so I'm, my thing is like these other comedians he's talking about. So he's saying he did, he's like, I, I kept mine intact. That's what he said. It's, but it's sex slash power, though. And we, you yeah. have to introduce that power dynamic into it also because I don't think that they're just horny people running around. I mean, that's part of it. But another piece of it is I made you do this thing. Now I have power over you. Yeah. So, uh-huh. and, and that's, that's the easiest and way to do that to another man is have that sexual edge over them. So, yeah, yeah. So, so another name he brought up was Kevin Hart. Now, Kevin Hart. Wait, wait. We didn't finish the um. You so he brought up Cam brought up the Brandon T. Jackson. Wait, I'm are we. I feel like we skipped the point that Cam made. He had he had two um. Uh, not I'm mad because it was in the back of my head that was important to talk about. We glazed Brandon over T. it. Though. Brandon T. Jackson, what career ending after doing the playing the playing the uh, woman's role or something or playing? That? Yeah, so he brought that up. I just don't think we should scoop past the dress thing too fast because it's an interesting. True. True. It's an interesting thing. Um, man, I just can't remember what he said. I'm sorry, well, y'all. Well, I, I, while I was, I had while I had asked about. It, what is, what Why are you looking done? up, Ciroc? Because y'all, <laughs> y'all can't hear that. I heard the plane. I heard the plane. Yo, that motherfucker's out of clues. <laughs> 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 hey. <laughs> I ain't trying to die from nothing that I can prevent. If I can move my black ass out the way. <laughs> oh, my God. I can move. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. If I can remember the point, if I can remember the point, I'll go back. I'll go back. But, uh, the, whole role, the whole role with males taking uh, playing um playing a woman. Now he played it ma- yeah. like in Big Mamas. He played it like majority. It was like because he he did play a guy as well. He was trying to he was playing a person disguised into a woman's. They were undercover. So That's the whole thing was, of Big Mama's house. Yeah. 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 So he was so he was showing kind of versatility. You know, playing two roles in a sense. So again, like what's the I don't. I'm, what I'm trying it's to not ask, a, like a, it's not a skill thing, though, Arrington. It's a, um, what do they call it? A buck break. A hack. It's, a low, a low hanging a, fruit hack. Yeah, it's it's a way of kind of demasculating. It's like a filler. Thing. It's just like fill, uh, look, we need a film. Let's go ahead and fill here. Put on this. It's dress, deeper than that, doing. though. It's deeper than that. Um, and a lot of a lot of black male comedians have talked about it. Um, and if you think about it, a lot of black male comedians have done it. Chris Rock has done it. Mm-hmm. Martin has done it. Jamie Fox. Um, Man, I can I can Jamie save Fox. you some time. Every yeah. comedian, every single comedian that is in the 50 million plus game, they yeah. did it. But yeah. let's just not say that black men are doing it without saying that the white folks did it too. I oh, mean, sure. the, yeah, the white folks do it too. Mrs. Absolutely. White Mrs. Comedians, absolutely. Yeah. Man, the list is so long; it's ridiculous. If you ever got time, just Google the the comp the compilation of uh, mm. you know comedians and dresses. Steve yeah. Martin. I mean, it's just so many, and yeah. that's why I don't want to do it. It's because it's been done literally thousands of times yeah, since yeah. the '80s, maybe even further yeah. than that. So it's like, well, mm. I'm glad Sarah brought that up though, because it was a it was um something that came across my feed of you know people always criticizing like the black the black male comedians doing it or black male actors yeah. pulling those runs. They're like, wait a minute. It's been done on you know on, on both sides. It's like Yeah, there's a reason make- for it. There's there's still a reason. It it's mm. been done on both sides, but it I, I just feel like on our side it, it means something different. And I could be wrong in that, but if it feels like it's a passageway of some like a way sport. to disrespect like a way to disrespect the talent level it's, in the you okay like, to you feel know? like that but I feel like they do it to white men too. I equally yeah. hate it no matter yeah. who does it. Like I equally hate it. Mm-hmm. Unless you are a drag entertainer, then right. leave it alone because right. it's just been repeated how many times do we have to keep doing this run on joke. It is whack. Yeah. But and it he just talked keeps about happening. even the one role he said that they they wanted to do like the rape scene 
too. Oh yeah, which yeah, took it even, yeah, Friday took it even yep. further. And you know, of course, he was like, "It's not funny. Like, it's not funny." But you know, there's deeper meaning behind why they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, a race I don't know if Q, if Q if Q was willing to change it. I don't think he was about that. That do like I think when he was writing the script, he just probably thought that it was funny. And then right. when he got it in the the hands of Cat Williams, Cat Williams was like, "Man, on in no situation will this be." Mm-hmm. And he made the scene yeah. way better. I mean, the scene mm-hmm. that they had was tremendously w- better than if he would have got actually raped. He stole he, that. Him getting them, yeah, them pliers. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> Pimpin. Iconic. It's about to be it would have been everywhere. <laughs> right. It would have been a terrible ending if he would have just actually got raped. Yeah. Because where would they go from that? Yeah. Where There's would nowhere they go, to go from, from that? That's yeah. Funny. Yeah. And now he's not a pimp no more. No. You can't be a pimp after your booty hole stretched. It's a different. You type can't. Of pimp. That's for sure. That's a hell of a sequel. Mm-mm. That's a hell of a sequel. Yeah. No, I'm joking. But you on the uh, stroll? Oh, I remember now. Uh, uh. He so we talked about how uh Ricky Smiley and Tyler Perry cannot act outside of the dress, mm-hmm. and I somewhat agree because Ricky Smiley got little Daryl. So if mm-hmm. he's playing little Daryl or a woman in a dress, Ricky Smiley is funny on camera, mm-hmm. and same way with Tyler Perry. We saw that we saw there's one show that Tyler Perry was that he wasn't a, a woman. And there's one movie that I saw that Tyler Perry mm-hmm. wasn't a Wait, woman. the one I know which one you talk about. The one he was an action hero? When we was an action it, hero. No, oh, no. So Alex Cross. It was so bad. Oh, it, it was, was bad. It was so bad. It was bad. bad. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, I'll give I'll give it, him credit to uh oh shit. What's the um not the show's the, name? Not the why did I get married? Why did I get married wasn't that bad, but he did one called like Good Deeds or Every yeah. Good Deeds. That was actually he was pretty he but was pretty decent in that. To the point you can of hear Medea in his roles. <laughs> and even, yeah. even why did why did I get married? When you f- surround yourself with that much talent in people, like you don't like your inefficiencies get hidden anyway. Yeah, and mm-hmm. longer, that is true. Well, and it, <laughs> I would say this too: directors are not good actors because I remember when Spike Lee would sometimes make little cameos in his films and play role. He's not, you know, he's better behind the camera. So in general, like Tyler Perry is really just not that now. Hey, the Medea role. Hey, he, it made a millions. That was his yeah. thing. But yeah, to, that's, a, to, that's not a character. That's a caricature. Same thing as Will Darrow. Same thing as it, they're they're playing these extra overt roles. For like Ciroc would say to me, it's it's hackish. You know what I'm saying? So like, low it, hanging it's fruit. Not, it's easy. They're not acting. They're just playing these these far fetched, over the top characters. And mm-hmm. anyone could do that. And maybe not anyone, but most people. No, you're right. You're right. Anyone can do that. Arrington can dress up like Cat Williams and do five minutes on stage and Fact. kill. Fact. All he got to do Fact. put a wig on Arrington. Put the blue pimp wig on Arrington. Put this green suit on him. I guarantee you, right, he will though. kill a five minute set because Absolutely. it's just so easy to do. You're not yeah, being we, you. We, You're we being someone that. who's already funny. We have right. Oh, no, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I mean, Wallace, while, you know, while Cat Williams is hot, hey, no. Could you be my coach? Could you be my coach? Sir, we just had a whole argument about what stealing jokes mean to me. If you do it in front of me, I'm I'm gone. Wow. Like I am gone. This is hey, y'all warning be, now. Hey, 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 you be gone with that paper though. You be gone What if it's all original material, just cat like? Just his voice. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I've been I've been accused of sounding like Cat Cat Williams a few times. So this is this is a Let this me, is a blurry. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, Ciroc, when Chier and I was watching, and she's like saying the whole time, why do I see Ciroc right now? On oh, the oh like, but, but, but that's, Ciroc, that's a compliment, though. That's a compliment. It's a, it's a compliment. That's a compliment. And, and you know what I was thinking? Ciroc is like a, a, a love child pause of Cat Williams and Eddie Griffin. Mm. Like, his, his style... Funny. Is it like, and I don't think it's intentional. I I'll take that. Both of those people are in my in my top five. 
Ciroc is being who he is, but like you can see like the I, I don't even want to say influence because I don't know if they actually influenced you, but I see both of them. Mm. And it's that strong, um, militant type comedy. And it, uh, yeah, it's the, yeah, it's, it's the don't yeah. give a fuck. It's the don't give yeah, a fuck. For sure. Yeah. That's pretty for much sure. what it is. Um, for sure. I want to bring up y'all. Mark Curry, there was there was clips of Mark Curry accusing Steve already of I think stealing his jokes and this and that and the other. And yeah, it was um, old. Oh yeah, and it, it was it, it was very old, but like yep. it wasn't as it didn't raise a lot of like you know noise like because Mark like, Curry's buried. Nobody. Well, and, that, yeah. and, that's all, and, that's all, and that's all I was gonna ask yeah. is it just matters on like the the trajectory. Yeah. The of top the, the top yeah. dogs made Mark Curry's voice nothing. Now yep. Yep. in the comedy world again, I hate I hate saying that, but I mean I guess that's why I'm on the panel in the first place because that's the <laughs> that's the point of view that I see from other comedians. Mark Curry is a legend. Yes, we absolutely. Absolutely. when he's yeah. doing a show, if he asks you to do a show, if you get booked by him or his team, you are going. No thought yep. about it. You know yep. his talent is real. Yep. Um, but when it comes to the masses, mainstream, he's buried deep. Yep. The that yes. click, that little now I don't believe in the Illuminati, but mm. I do believe oh, in controlling groups of interest. Yeah. Mm. So the Illuminati and could be a group called the A faction in California. And then mm -hmm. there's a separate group called the B faction in New York. And then there are C's mm -hmm. and D's. And D. These people don't interact with each other for real. They just got their own grasp of power that they gatekeep mm -hmm. for. And mm -hmm. the people who were in the same realm as Mark Curry, who reached that status and became buddy buddy, they did that to Mark Curry. Mm -hmm. Once they got that material from him, once they they did that, they took that Mr. Cooper, took mm -hmm. that Mr. Cooper format and shipped it off. Yep. They made sure his voice stayed. Boo, 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 yeah. Boo, boo. It, yeah. And, so and I, he is it, still a talented comedian. And see, and I never really watched. I'm just now starting to watch uh, Hang On With Mr. Cooper. And I'm obviously I'm looking at the years when mm -hmm. it was put out. It was put out before the Steve Harvey show. Because, again, I never, you know, I'm looking. And when when Kat said that, I'm like, holy shit. That is true. And, I mean, it's, yeah. been, it's been done many times with other performers. Like, you know, we all talk about living singles being way before friends but which one got more you know more success and yada 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 so show pe people do it all the time and it's not fair because again it's like what you talked about stealing whoever got the most money to uh throw at the project really exactly exactly which makes me what ask, you gonna say michelle from legal from a legal standpoint sorok is it common for comedians you know like in music if you steal somebody's music which we were talking about earlier if you steal it and you don't have permission you're getting sued you're paying money so is that something that commonly happens in comedy as well as far as stealing without uh incriminate movie. myself the best way to go about it in the comedy world unfortunately is um we meet personally yeah. um anytime that i got my stuff stolen and i and i can reach them i touch them and uh i know that's probably not the most mature way to go about it but Comedians ain't got money like that to be delegating and being in court nonstop, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's just every weekend we miss off stage is a lot of money missed in our pockets. And so to go through court and spend all that money that you barely making in the first place, just it's hard to do. So oh, well, no it is easy to do, basically. though. Oh, no, there is. There is street just law on, and it gets handled. Way. So the, yeah. the funny thing about that is like with music, you can mathematically prove that this song got taken mm -hmm. from that song. You know what I'm saying? Like that's true. With comedy, you can like it's a it's a proof of concept thing sometimes because it's usually not mm -hmm. word for word verbatim. Mm -hmm. So how do you prove how do you that? Know? And and then and then in a sense, how do you even prove that that's your original material? Because you could have got it from a comedy club from some innocuous place in portland right. oregon that you were just randomly at and you saw someone do it mm -hmm. so it's like and as much as i hate these points you're right yeah like as much yeah. as these go against my argument you <laughs> are absolutely right like you are yeah. right that but yeah. a yeah. lot of comedians on, on my level anyway that's why we record everything everything right. is not time stamp i can right. go that's why right. i got so many albums out now i can go and tell you when i created a joke i might not yeah. use it i might right. use different jokes now but it's still mine. I don't right. care if I left the baby on the porch. It's still my baby. So, so let's yeah. talk about Kevin Hart. Are we, we can move on. Yeah, ahead, okay, so, Ooh, so Kevin, this is rough to me. They they have have me. I don't like this one. 
I love this I one. Like and it. the only reason why, because when Kevin was on the, the climb of his career in my head, I'm like, damn. I'm like, that should be Cat. Because in my mind, Cat and Cat and Kevin was almost to me like the ones like, okay, somebody cheated or tried to who's going to win this right battle? Who's yeah. Gonna, who's going to win it? Yeah. So <laughs> Kevin has been responding. You know, he's been joking about it like nonstop talking publicly he has i think there was an old clip of him on the breakfast club he has said cat chose drugs that's why this and that and the other so yeah. it's always been a long beef when did this really when did this beef start boy i won't say when cat said started. when it started yeah cat, cat said, said when it started what was it with yeah. the sit when it had the sitcom when kevin hart no, had that sitcom it, no. it was he was supposed to be in fool's gold and he couldn't travel out the country and kevin hart stood in that role and mm. that's when the friction between them started. And it, it. I'm not necessarily saying that's when the beef started, but that's when the the separation slash friction between the two started. And it was just Kevin took off. Now a little of this could be some hate on Cat's part because I know he looks at Kevin and was like, "He's in my spot." Yeah. Because they said a lot of the roles that Cat didn't get or wouldn't take or whatever, Kevin Hart picked those up, swooped those up in his early career. You know what I'm saying? So I think he looks at him and he's like, yo, the, the billion dollar entity that he is right now is me. And then Kevin Hart drew the knife in a little deeper when he was on The Breakfast Club with Tiffany Haddish. And he was like, Kevin Hart, uh, Cat Williams chose drugs instead of being about his craft, et cetera, et cetera. And that just ignited wow. everything. Yeah. Is it, so before I say my think piece, I let mm -hmm. me pre let me you know lay the foundation of cat williams kevin hart dave chappelle eddie griffin and uh uh red fox these are the people who who i don't necessarily study when it comes to the stage presence but i study as far as the business mm -hmm. and i love mm -hmm. these comedians with everything i mean mm -hmm. i really do even though cat you know he has a team i mean kevin he has a team to help yeah. And you know other other comedians did different ways. It's just that Kevin's worth ethic. I cannot Unmatched. downplay, yeah. and it's something Unmatched. that I, I it's I want to get to that level when it comes to work ethic. Um, mm -hmm. It's just amazing. However, I think that what really really made the two go at it was when they did that special about the West Coast Comedy Store, and you know how important it was and everything and then they came up with them lies saying that kevin hart <laughs> came up on that like mm -hmm. that wasn't true you meant, you like a lot you. of stuff that they yeah. were saying were lies and because mm -hmm. i was i was, that's where i started at like that's mm -hmm. the west coast is where i got my my comedy veins in yeah. and when you look at some of the hole in the wall joints where people came up and you look on the wall of who's on there kevin hart's picture is not on them stages mm -hmm. so it's like they just made that up because Kevin is famous and he may have performed there back in the, you know, when he was still somebody though, like he was still mm -hmm. a traveling, touring, big time celebrity when he finally did touch them places. It wasn't mm -hmm. that he came up on it like he did on the East coast. Yeah. So I think when people started creating those lies about Kevin, Kat had even more reason to dislike someone who he was competing with. Now, in the interview, he says multiple times, I love competition. And he even states that he doesn't, like, hate these people nefariously. Like, it's not like, you know, uh, uh, it's just coming out of left field and he hates their character, except Cedric. Right. But... <laughs> Cedric seems Cat very... It, he said that man looked like a walrus. <laughs> walrus. Yeah, he, he I would feel like that about Cedric, too. But... <laughs> So Borderline. him calling out him calling out things that cat that Kevin does. Cat William calling out things that Kevin does. It's like poking at your opponent. Kevin does have a team in the back on laptops doing do 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 do. And they are filming his sets and going back as a group and do 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 do. Now I'm not saying that's not a good thing or a bad thing. To tell you the truth, I don't know. I never tried it. So right. who knows? That could be a great way of do doing comedy. Uh, it just doesn't feel real to me. Like, it just doesn't feel natural to me. Yeah. But, I mean, if someone pokes at you nonstop about how you do your job, and they're your direct, you know, your peer, your opponent, they're like, mm -hmm. you're going for the same roles. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be remiss if I wasn't to say something back. So, it makes sense for Kevin yeah. to go head to head and jab these little jokes. I just yeah. don't like that Kevin Hart's, 
Kevin Hart acts like he is too big to address it directly. If I was Kevin, mm. and I know this might be some street stuff, but mm. I would accept Cat Williams' challenge. All them years ago, <laughs> y'all remember, Cat Williams challenged Kevin on stage to a versus. Yeah. He said, we it can book an arena. Yeah. I'm going to say, right. Like, he said, you can pop. put a ring in the middle. <laughs> they can a play basketball. basketball. <laughs> 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 Two microphones and y'all can rap battle. <laughs> or we can do it in comedy. Now, yeah, to me, yeah. if a comedian draws, calls me out like that, I got to go. Whether I lose yeah. or win, you can't so deny the Cat he Williams. And, I, go I, ahead. Don't think he, I don't he think, think he'll win. He I don't think he thinks he'll win. Uh, Who? Uh, Kevin? Kevin? Kevin Hart. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, know I don't think Kevin thinks yeah. he'll win. I don't think so either. Mm -hmm. D is it a possibility that he could? I definitely I do. Because first and second special Kevin was something amazing. Yeah. We still use certain bars mm -hmm. that he says. Big little now, granted, man. every every special cat has ever done, there's something that we can do. do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. But I think Kevin got a chance if he uses the Plastic Cut Boys, you, that, that same format that he's been using. I think I think Kevin's worried about, like you said, if he if he thinks he will lose, then what's this gonna do, be with my, you know, how's this gonna affect my for pocket? your image wise? Like so you'll be the number two. Well, you'll be number two. You'll be the which, best number two comedian in the world. Mm -hmm. Which was um, <laughs> two questions. One, which was better, Pimp Chronicles or Big Little Man? Pimp Chronicles. Pimp. Uh, yeah. Pimp Chronicles. I agree. Pimp Chronicles was. Y'all gotta go was back and watch that one. When he wore the green, was that the first one when he yes, wore the green? that was that was yeah. the one. That was the green one. Put him. That was out the very first one. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. mm -hmm. little man, yeah. where was little man at? Was that in? What was? What was that? Big little man at? was his very first stand up, I, and, and I that was because they were their first mm. first. Okay. I'm trying to remember full length stand up performances. Was that the one where he was talking about his dad dick swinging in his pants? When he was no, I think that was, no, think that, that, was, was all right, all right, all right. that was that, that was one. the second or third one. I oh, remember. all right, all right, all right was the second one. I think yeah. I think that one was uh, that one was could that be Pimp when, Chronicles. Uh, actually, was that I when he was joking? How no, Shaq fell? All, how Shaq all right, all right, all right was like the third or the fourth one because I saw that one oh. live. Yeah, oh, wow. I saw that one live when he was there, when he was traveling that one. Mm -hmm. There was one that he did when like uh, players of the like LeBron Shaq when Shaq was playing with the that Cleveland was, Cavaliers. Uh, all Star Jam, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting no story came out about that one. He was not last in the recording. He he did so well and tore the house down so much that they switched the order when they produced mm. the actual video mm. because of how well. Now he you did. know you a powerhouse then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So we you know you a powerhouse. We're we're not gonna sleep on the talent that is Kevin Hart. Um, but I I see. Where cat is coming from? I'll say real that. quick, real quick. What uh, section the entertainer special y'all think could compete with both? <laughs> yeah, he's so petty. Why are you so? Why are it's you okay. like? This? It's okay. It's why okay. Why are you like this? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, we don't have one. We, we don't have one. I was quiet. I, I was listening I, I for will, the answers. No, I, I will say, I'll speak to a Cedric just, special. No, Harrison, no, 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 no. I answer, I'll answer the question. Just respectfully say King's Economy. Just say King's Economy and bow out, bro. I will answer it. I'll answer it. I'll let me answer it. I, I've seen two of Cedric specials. On YouTube? And no, they're not that good. <laughs> not on Netflix or Tubi. Yo, <laughs> hold up. Michelle just dropped the bar. We not going to let this slide. She said on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Michelle got jokes out. Okay, okay. okay. You no, know, I should be saying out though, because my special is definitely on YouTube. So, <laughs> but no, but low key though, like again, my top comedians is Bernie and Dave Chappelle. So obviously, I'm not. I mean, Cedric has never been in my top ten, top five. You know, but his stand ups are not. War not for him, good. You were going to war for him because his movie. Was, he was no, going to war was, for his movie. No, I wasn't going to war for his movie. I was going to war on saying you were saying that he was completely talentless. I I was saying. I was fighting. I body said in the verses right now with no prep. That's how I'm telling you. Me at this level, and trust me, I, I do think highly of myself, but I'm realistic. I know who I can take on the stage and who I can't. I If you put me and Cedric in a room with people who've never seen neither of us, no favoritism or nothing, we don't know who Cedric Entertainer is, we don't know who Ciroc Fox is, Fox is, and we go joke for joke, original content. I will destroy him. 
I don't care what that makes me look like on camera. I mm -hmm. hate thieves. This is why I don't talk to the person who accused me of stealing. Because it's just, it's the most, huh. <laughs> that is a hill that I will die on. Once I find out you stole anything on stage that wasn't like, direct comparison like there's been times where i said a joke and i was like hey i took this from what's call and this is what i think about it like i heard a, a joke that uh you know steve harvey did in the 90s and when i was doing hearing that joke this is what i felt about it and i can i play off that but stealing content once i found out that oh i'm gonna recite your jokes before you do it i can agree i mean i can agree i, can agree. <laughs> I can't disagree with that like i said i was fighting for the fact you know the talents that that's what i was fighting for not the films not the freaking uh specials or whatever he's done because like i said his special his specials is not up to par it's not up to par like i'm gonna tell you who's i will i'll rewatch his most it's, recent it's, so it's, i can give a fair judgment would you would you choose like well i don't did he mention no he didn't say tracy morgan never mind i'm just making up something nah, i thought cat has said tracy morgan but um phase on phase on that's who it was yeah that was funny because he said i he have never seen phase on do Stand up, so I, I I don't know. He did one. He did. He, like he, he hosted a do... um Shaq. Um, he hosted one of Shaq's uh All Star yeah, things. I feel like he, he was one. on Def Comedy Jam way back in the day. Also, I think I missed those. The yeah. big guys that I remember, um, and yeah, granted, I, I'm younger, so I don't. You know what I mean? I don't. Know. Uh, Chris Tucker was Bruce. Bruce, no big guys oh, like uh, the, the heavy set back guys. Fat guys. Bruce, 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 yeah, yeah, Bruce, yeah. Bruce, Bruce, and uh, was Earthquake big back then? He yeah. was bigger than he was than he That's now. why he called himself Earthquake. Oh, <laughs> man, maybe. See, that's how I'm young, because the Earthquake, yeah, I knew yeah. he was thick. He was thick, but he wasn't like. <laughs> no, Earthquake was huge. Earthquake was Lavelle huge Crawford. Around. So Lavelle Crawford oh, yeah. and Bruce Bruce yeah. Earthquake. Those were the three heavyset guys that I like really was like paying attention to. And I just don't remember seeing anything Faison did. I don't yeah. even know where Faison is like from, because you know how like earthquake earthquake red grant tommy date you know you got your dc comics you have your ohio comics i'm trying to say i don't even know where uh uh phase is even like isn't he from repping. cali i thought it was from yeah he cali. gives cali vibes yeah. okay so then, i right. don't know though yeah i don't know you know who i'm glad I didn't catch any um any uh straight shots or anything from this who i really really respect as a comedian Ooh, um Eddie Dion Cole. Mm. Dion oh Cole. yeah Dion, 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 Dion. yeah, yeah. yeah a lot yeah. of people steal from him though mm. I can that see whole that. little, that. well, because he's a oh, writer. Yeah, he's... that yeah. is some of the most genius shit I've ever seen on a comic <laughs> stage. That yeah. it's so simple, and all he's doing is telling his jokes, but he's putting that spin to it. Like, oh, you didn't like that one? All right, like it... <laughs> he, he'll cross it out. You'll see him. Yeah, all right, that yes, work. yes. <laughs> but that's so genius. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you mentioned Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin was a beast, yeah. an absolute beast. Um, and he's, he's, he's one of the few people too. who I think could keep up with Cat Williams on the stage. Oh, for sure. Mm. Energy wise, money wise, originality wise, like Eddie Griffin just had his own style. I can't, I can't even really say what his style was. It was his. It was his. I'm um, glad. He, I'm glad he credit DL Hughley because for him to come after mm -hmm. Steve said, you know, at first I'm like, oh, please don't say DL, please don't say DL, and he was yeah. like, no, no, I'll never speak anything. But I'm like, thank God, because DL's one he of said my no DL slander. He is a high thinker comedian though, so a lot of people don't yeah. don't like him. So yeah. you'll see a lot of comments on yeah, you'll see a lot of comments yeah. about DL being not funny, but it's because it takes too much brain power to, Facts. you know, some people mm -hmm. go to comedy shows just to turn their brain off mm -hmm. and yeah. DL Hughley joke is so multi-layered that yep. you know yep. that's yep. where what makes to me like D, uh, Dave Chappelle so hilarious because I mean I I think a lot with his with his um jokes like his most he, recent he does it he does it in a very palatable way like he lubed it, it up he yeah, lubed his absolutely. joke up <laughs> absolutely um but yeah I agree he is definitely a, another thinking comedian um, that I would put up there. He'll address social issues. Yes. He'll address everything. Yeah. Did y'all see his last special? Like his very most recent one? I liked it. I was weak. I, I liked it, it too. I don't know if it was the best one out of the past couple. No, movies. not the best one. But it, it was I good. said it. I said it like that because um, you saw the comments about it and how everybody was saying how bad it was mm -hmm. and how it was oh, like this really? is just getting sad. Yeah, before I watched it, it, the comments about it made me almost not. 
Like, it was like, oh, my God. Uh, but then when I finally watched it, it was like, man, what are everybody tripping about? This was hilarious. But then mm-hmm. the one of his first jokes, <laughs> one, of his, <laughs> one of his first jokes, I'm not going to just mess it up, but it was it was hilarious. And then he he said, well, if you think I was going to talk about that, you're wrong. And, but he was definitely talking about that. Talking about it. <laughs> but he hit everybody. He hit, you know, people who's handicapped. He hit people who's trans. He hit gays. He hit straights. He hit black. He hit white. He hit everybody. He hit Asians. For everyone. <laughs> which, which he's always been doing. So when he gets this heat for bullying and stuff like that, I just never understand it. He's a comedian. Like, uh, uh-huh. yeah. So y'all, the question, the question before we end this, the question is, who else or what are we gonna see now in the state of comedy, right? Like, how is this is this gonna put any effect to like some of the names that he had that Cat Williams has spoke about? How is I, Cat I, Williams I, I personally don't think so, and and I and I respect Sirach's opinion about mm-hmm. the whole said thing, but I don't think that I mean said is gonna be said. Like now, mm-hmm. as far as like booking shows and stuff like that, maybe may may affect them a little, but. He's he's already in that place where like they're not going to cancel that show that CBS show yeah. you know what I'm saying like he's going to be able to do what he's going to he does Ricky Smiley still has his radio show that's mm-hmm. not changing like I think it's a it's it was a refreshing thing to see behind the scenes of how these things operate and his opinion and him going off I don't think much will be affected of it I hope mm-hmm. it will lead to cat being a little like getting some things and stuff like that but who knows who knows i hope it adds accountability to all of them because mm. they were called out and they can't run away from that so i guess my hope would be that they take that as all right that's you need to do better right. if you want to continue but people love drama people right. love drama i feel like they're for initially people want to see their responses yeah in their shows and for stuff sure. they want to see what they're going to say for sure so <clears throat> Oh, go ahead. You go ahead. I was just gonna say, people uh, are going, going, going after uh, Shannon Sharp just for the fact that how he was. Yeah, they're stupid. We're not <laughs> even. Gonna, so we're crazy. not even. Yeah, gonna that was crazy. That. I saw that. Yeah. So <laughs> this is this is though, exactly right? what's going to happen in the comedy world, and I can even check back in with y'all, you know, to give y'all the updates on what's going down behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, so you are sort of right, uh, Cam. Mm-hmm. A lot of those people will be untouched on their syndicated productions Mm -hmm. so for a while they'll be untouched for a while the top folks that he named that were accused and proven and then Mm -hmm. everyone else who's on the top who was accused of proof and proven and proven not just accused Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. accused and proven of stealing source jokes they're still going to have their shows for a little while but what's going to happen is on the comedy stand-up game in, in on mm. the stages oh my mm. mom is calling one second sorry y'all <laughs> so on the stand-up stages the number one spots the headliners that's all going to start shifting mm. everything as far as the top dogs of stand-up comedy the best stages you can get to the best comedy festivals the best uh uh, uh as, as far as this level that you can reach there's room now everything just got shifted and so now let me, you, uh, let me ask you this question right there before you move on to rock who mm-hmm. who dictates that is it mm-hmm. is it the fans is it the bookers or is it just a natural it's the comedians comedian so you got to okay. understand okay. the producers for that level of shows mm-hmm. are the hey mom i'm on the radio hey mom oh Hey ma. Yeah, everybody saying hi. hi. Oh, hey everybody. She said y'all here. Uh, y'all, hi ninety one. You know seven five seven, the most, the second most listed two radio station in the seven five seven. This is my mom. She's talking about my brother. But mom, I'm gonna call you right back. I'm about to start cussing. I'm gonna call you right back. All right, all right. Love you. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Oh. <laughs> First of all, first of all, my mom, my my mom like fat ugly men. My mom like fat ugly men. That is. Oh my god. None of y'all got enough belly. None of y'all got enough belly. I keep on stretching it out. I will keep on stretching it out. How did he do that? Clip that. Anyway, 
<laughs> no, that's the Robin going after the whole family. He's in the whole family. <laughs> oh, Fair man. enough. Fair enough. I'll pass the message to my mother. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so let's let's just put something. So let me go back to Cam's question of you know who decides the the uh the production level i am getting interrupted like everybody knows i'm working now you, so you're on fire right now man it's she like heard, heard that's not my that's a that's another that's a booking agent but uh, they ain't got the whole money so they ain't got the whole thing they ain't got the whole thing so i'm not worried about it they about a thousand short hold up y'all i'm sorry the <laughs> So, so yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 an interesting thought because it's like, I, I don't I don't not believe what Rock is saying, but it's just interesting to me how that natural okay. attrition kind of happens. But we'll I'm, like, it's not, okay. now you want to like be glued. Sorry, you know, I want to go to like every yeah, time yeah, yeah, exactly. down, be like, I apologize. Exactly. So this is this is how it goes. So there's a tier list in stand up comedy, right? You have different levels. Uh, a, a quick summary would be you have open micers. Uh, paying gigs, featured spots, headliners, touring, and then now you're a national comedian. Like now you're a national, international, a list or movies, da 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 da. Now on the headliner spots in the headliner slot, anybody who's already there, and I mean I mean headliner slot, I mean you're going to some of the most known comedy clubs in the game. And you frequently hit those hour spots for those clubs. I'm not even there for that level because I don't even I don't even do national chain comedy clubs like that because I don't get asked to. So mm. if I don't get asked to, I'm not gonna be in their face to suck dick to do it. And right. that's the disconnect with my career and the difference between why I gotta go independent like Cat Williams and Eddie Griffin and can't go the same route as Kevin Hart or Dion Cole. It's mm. just I don't have those connections. Yeah. However, because of the shift, now there's going to be a natural selection of who are we taking from those headliner spots to move up to those movie roles. Mm. So there's going to be a graduating class of new comedians that you're going to start seeing in these prominent movie multi-million dollar projects. Now what that does is makes a gap for the new you know, headliners, people in my mm. position who... Mm. Goes around touring and da 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 da. Now all of us are starting to get looked at for these major chain headliner spots, mm. and we all shift up. And that's kind of how it works. Eventually, once those main headliners get picked up, you'll start seeing people's shows get moved out the way. You'll start seeing Ricky Smiley get replaced. You'll start seeing Cedric the Entertainer get uh, less acting gigs. He might have what he currently have, and they might ride that out. But his mm. show won't get re, it won't come back with another season. Now that mm. might happen this season or next, but I promise you it's going to be ending soon. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I've been right about this so many times. We've seen it so many times when right. a main star celebrity, as far as the stand up comedy game, is proven to be fraud, they get out of there. Mm. They are gone. You don't know what the hell happened to them. And yeah. it's not no loud noise or nothing. All you do is see a new face. All you do mm -hmm. is see another Darrell. You see a, a, oh, I keep calling that man Darrell when it's Lorel. Lorel, Lorel. Yeah, you see, you see a random Lorel. You you see these people who the gatekeepers already had at the gate, and yeah. oh, there's there's Let's room. They let another one in, mm -hmm. and that's how we get Tiffany Haddish. That's how we get Lorel. That's how we get. You know all these comedians like DC Fly and everything because the gate is being opened because there's room yeah. being made. Somebody yeah. got kicked out the circle. That's how mm. it goes. Now, if you're an independent artist like Cat Williams, you're not standing there waiting for a gate. You're mm. sitting there creating your own world. You're sitting right. there creating your own thing. So that's why some of us can say and do and talk the way we do because how you gonna fire yourself? Mm -hmm. Everything that I do is either self-produced or helped with, mm -hmm. like this show by itself. This show is produced by us. Like right. it's us. Yeah, we might tick off Manor, but even <laughs> if he decides to kick us, there's still hundreds of radio stations that would take us without a doubt. So right. it, it's right. not. That's why I'll be like, 
It's all right. I got Q ninety five point five on standby just in case. Let's take so that part out that in the podcast part of yeah, this year and not not ninety one. <laughs> uh, but I've always had. I've always had. As soon as we thought about the the radio show, I instantly thought, okay, who are three or four radio shows that loves me that I can mm. say sorry to my guys to and girls, mm. sorry to my crew to for getting us kicked off. And I'm like, well, we have the number one radio station here. Mm. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. but we got something. But we're yeah. self-produced. That's why we can do that. Cat yeah. Williams is not going to get kicked off his own tour. Facts. <laughs> he's, not, he's not standing at the gates for nobody. And I respect that game a little bit more. Yeah. But Seth, uh, Steve, all that stuff, you're going to watch them get phased out. And it's going to look like naturally. It's going to look like natural, blah, 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 blah. These people ain't going to do stand up no more. They, they're not going to touch these local stages. You're not going to be able to see them at Funny Bones. Nothing. And you're going to be like, damn, why? Unless they self-produce a show, you're not going to see them. I, I have a question. What happened to Gerard Carmichael? Who's that? He did a, a, the Carmichael show. So he had a show. He, he and, and the reason I'm asking this question is there's a follow-up to this question. So he had a show that was on for two seasons that like uh-huh. um, David Allen Greer, um, Loretta, Devine, am, Tiffany Tiffany Loretta Devine, Lil Rel, Tiffany Haddish, like huge show, two seasons. Oh, yes. yes. He had he had his first stand up that was like on. It was, I think, HBO, HBO Max. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was HBO. His last stand up, he came out of the closet. And... Yeah, he came out as gay. Mm-hmm. And that was the last we heard from Gerard Carmichael. Mm-hmm. Now, I asked that question because Cat Williams brought up the thing of an industry plan. Mm-hmm. Someone that gets pushed out in front of everybody with no rhyme or reason as to how you don't see the the work, you don't see the, the comeuppance, you just see they're there. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. my question is like, one, Sirach, how do you feel about that the industry plant thing um and like specifically for carmichael carmichael or just in general kevin hart that they accuse of i don't know that i necessarily agree about the kevin hart thing but you can be an industry plant and still work your tail off so mm-hmm. i don't know i i i don't have any uh, feeling either way but just how do you feel about do you believe that's a thing and yeah uh, so I guess the the way to answer that question is what do I think a industry plant is because that's also up for debate. What I believe an industry plant is is a studio or production company, say Foxdale Studios, and we have notable reach when it comes to our productions. Meaning, I can put my show on NBC without any sweat at all. That is a a noticeable reach, a a a reputable company uh, of any type of sitcom show or mm-hmm. movie or anything. Uh, the Harvey Weinsteins without the sexual assault type power. Yeah. These yeah. people look for individuals who they can advertise through easily without too much, um, what's the, without too much, I don't know, trouble. I don't, I don't know a, a good way of answering without being too clean. Clean, yeah, they knew they usually clean yeah. and that they can mold easily. Mm-hmm. So, say you know, I, I get decided to be an industry plant, which will never happen, but let's no. just say, sorry, fam, ain't happening, <laughs> it ain't happening, it ain't happening. But I will most likely have to cut my locks, I will most likely have to, you know, get a couple tattoos removed. It would just they would have to change me into the image that they like, and mm-hmm. then once they do. They put millions of dollars behind my marketing. So yeah. they would give me a, a show at the Funny Bone and literally spend 2.5 on production alone, regardless mm. of what wow. I'm even talking about. And mm. then wow. choose and edit and spend weeks at a time on the the angle that they're going to use for this show. So an mm-hmm. industry plant is... It is very easy to be one. It's not as diabolical as what people think it is. And maybe that's what Cat Williams meant when he said, what do y'all think an industry plan is? Mm -hmm. It's not somebody Mm -hmm. who's trying to destroy the world. It's someone who's just trying to convey the advertising efforts of whatever company put them out there. And it could be fair to accuse Kevin of being one because of his 
advertisement endorsements. They, they commercialize. I mean, he could be. You know, he, he's very do I agree the whole time? Right, he's yeah. very commercial. But mm -hmm. do I agree? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Well, he says and does a lot of things that just is against industry plant movements. Mm -hmm. But it is he, what it is. He could, be, he could be a plant that just, like, there's nuance to it, right? Like, he could still mm -hmm. be the one that was put in that position because of whatever message they're trying to put out there. But they give right. them enough leeway and so whatever to exactly. Yeah. And exactly. I think, and I think too, he has he has gained so much. I mean, we've seen him involved in like the uh, the scandal about I think a previous gay joke he made. He had mm. the, uh, the sex so tape that allegedly went out. That's what someone like, brought up. They were like, "How can he be an industry plant and had that sex scandal?" And I'm like. Oh no, he can still he can still be, but I just think he's already I think he's already gained but, so no, much. But what they're saying is, if he was an industry plant, they would have buried it, oh. and we wouldn't. Oh. Have known. Yeah, oh, an yeah. industry plant yeah. would have been able to host the Oscars without any of them jokes getting pulled up. Right. That's oh, right. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I got you. And that's the that's what goes against the 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 whole accusation. That's one of the main things that goes against me anyway. Mm -hmm. Is when he was about to host the Oscars and get mm -hmm. too far up there, mm -hmm. they had to be like do 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 do. But it, it and it ended up not working anyway, though, because I mean he's arguably one of the most famous people, not just comedians, but one of the most famous people Facts. around. I mean, Facts. come on now, Kevin, it's Kevin Hart. <laughs> but you you know it's crazy when he he has co-headliner with The Rock. Mm -hmm. Like you can't really yeah. say who's the star in their movies because they're, they're here. So good. They're yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, like yeah. now, Steve e easy a commercialized person. Like Steve is like, what is he doing? He got he he's on the radio s almost seven days a week. He has yeah. the game show. He had multiple talk shows, and it's funny because I don't know if I, sh I sent y'all a video of Tony Rock going off about uh pretty recent too about Steve Harvey, um just saying like he's the man with the answers all of a sudden. Like come on, he's been. He's on I the think that too. Stuff. It's hilarious. I'm like, I thought how all of a beginning. sudden. One day I woke up and Steve Harvey was the voice of black people and I was like, <laughs> How look so how like, did I'm that like, happen? I'm like mm. all of a sudden he goes bald, he's Dr. Phil now. Like you got hero think like a man or had the, the think like a man boomed up, which hey Kevin Hart was a part of, and then you know you continue to see it's it's a lot, I would but. never want my wife to think like me. What if uh, I would like what what husband <laughs> would hear someone tell their wife <laughs> Hey, you need to well, think like a thing. man. We don't want that, but he he saw a lane to be the voice of the man that's protecting women. Yeah. He played and his he, cards right. He he, I protect women all the time, and I ain't never told a girl to think like a nigga. But he's also so think think Derek Jackson, think yeah. all those people that speak the language that certain women that want women to love. hear, <laughs> right? And you placate to them and then you tell them these things like, oh, you shouldn't wait 90 days before you have sex with him or he doesn't he respect did say you. That, yeah. you say That's crazy. I'm not going to last 90 days with you. I'm not going to last no. three. Once I go three <laughs> dates right. with you, three once I go wild. three dates with you, <laughs> sir, have you, come on, come on. I get I just woke up, but I'm sexy. Stop it. Like, I, I get, I, 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 come on, stop it. You've never been on a date with me. No, three dates. Three days and you are folding. You don't understand how charming <laughs> I am. What if you gonna call your parents about me? Rock. <laughs> then, they, then they can't. You know, they they have to like really know you. They want to know you. I don't. It think don't take that long. I'm an open book. Like like you're no. Pansexual like is a person who. Yeah, you turn about the spirit and not the. It's the. It's another not the word sex. for it. It's um. I, I've seen it on dating profiles. <laughs> yeah, like you're pansexual kind of fits it though. Pansexual uh, okay. kind of fits it. You turned on so, by the spirit of the person and not the sex of the person. Oh yes, 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 yeah. for sure. But I was thinking mm -hmm. there was a, there's one. It's like omnisexual or something like it's, it's hey. one of them that you got to appeal to their thoughts and brain mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Oh, oh yeah, that is yeah, one yeah. too. Yeah, 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 you know, you know what I, think, I was thinking. I think so. I think y'all, so. y'all, y'all know what I was thinking. Uh, here we go. Y'all all nasty. <laughs> <laughs> just, just because you stay on the vanilla side of things, sir, doesn't mean that we're nasty. Get your missionary sex out of here. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Let, huh, let's go back to the Call woman the thing. Steve, Steve, I feel like you write about that Steve Harvey saying 
things that women want to hear. Mm -hmm. But sure. I don't think that that's healthy for women who want to be in a healthy relationship. No, oh, it's not. It's just but that's not it's what it's not. about. It's that's not what it's about. You know. But I, mean? I always thought the goal was to help no, women, especially women that. who's been burned before. You I thought the goal was to be. You are not that naive. To be you are what? not that. Naive. I, I did. I, 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 I teach me. You, you got to learn me. You, you got to learn me. That was, you didn't think that was Steve Harvey's goal, did you? Uh, 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 no. <laughs> Steve Harvey's goal was to make money. What, do we, what and, are you going to say? The goal is, is to be make, what? what he is making. He is he is the black as of right now. He is the black Ryan Seacrest. They had they had Steve hosting New Year's specials. They had I mean, there's so much projects until it's insane, and I'm just like, when did it, this all happen? Because I, I find Steve good. really corny. I really do. It I found him really sounded good. good. What he was saying sounded good. But it wasn't fat, and like to your point, Sarah, it wasn't anything that was gonna put a woman in a place of being of achieving a, a successful relationship because the things he was telling women to do, we didn't rock with. So, how are you gonna catch a guy mm. when you're getting advice that doesn't appeal to the guy? You know Any of the guys <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Look, ladies, hey, I'm gonna say this so I can clip it later for my IG. I am never gonna tell you something just because it's nice to hear. I am trying to tell yeah. you something because I truly believe, whether you disagree or not, I truly believe what I'm telling you is going to help you love better. I love love so much. That mm -hmm. anybody who's earnestly trying to find it, I'll do whatever I can to assist and help you score. But that you might not hear what I have to say. You might not hear what I have to say. But, but you know what? I like one thing that I can say in different relationships I've been in. I like the person who can tell me things that, you know, is fucked up about myself. Mm -hmm. But it's just how it's done. And so I feel like, sure. though, even Cat Williams said in his special, he said... You know, there's a lot of women out here who don't have a man because they're acting like one. Oh, shit. And he said... Oh, damn. Then, now yeah, that I think about it, was that a shot at Steve? <laughs> mm. That's a bar. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't remember that. Yeah, he said... I had to go back. Said, and then he said, a few minutes after that, he said, uh, but if I'm being honest in business, I'll pick a woman over a man any day to do the job because they'll do yeah. it 10 times better than a man. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I've, to me, I was like, well, that's kind of conflicting because it's like, you don't, you know, to us to be so good in business or to always be so business minded, but then on the flip side of it, we don't want you acting like a guy, but the guy is a provider. Uh, I, can answer that. To I can a answer provider. that. I can answer that. I can answer that. Y'all know now that everyone who's in my company are women. I'm the only man who works Oh, in my mm. security. So T and me are the only men in my business. Mm. Um, everything else is ran by women. And it, I'm kind of on cat's side. I just prefer to work with women. I just prefer to, you know, in my office, I prefer to have women debate over issues and how we can get better at something than to hear men. Uh I, I don't. But do you think that puts us in a more masculine role in, no, the women in, around in me general? are extremely. The women around me are extremely feminine. They they don't except for it was definitely a little it's definitely a little tough, but <laughs> <laughs> but she still walks in her femininity when she's around me. So every woman who works with me directly, or works with me on the show or anything like that, I've never thought, man, this is a masculine bitch. Never. I've never thought this is a masculine motherfucker. No, I've mm -hmm. thought this is a hardworking woman. Mm -hmm. I, I they walk in their femininity around me. You know what I mean? But my wife and, and my girlfriend, they individually when they're by themselves, I would say that they are some tough people. My wife gets scary. Mm -hmm. My 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 lady, my girl, she man, she takes on the world sometimes. Like both of these ladies are extremely tough strong mentally capable of doing whatever they want to do but when they are around me they are girls girls they are so what type like of they, women do you think he's referring to when he's saying you can't get a think man like a man act like a man no he said oh the, a lot of women out here can't get a man because you're acting like a man i believe that would come from the standpoint of you have to let a man be a man leave 
Yeah, you I was have to let a man that's leave. That's exactly oh, what I was like. Thinking. For example, Michelle, yeah. I'm thinking of. I don't know if y'all remember. Y'all know the show Living Singles, Maxine. Mm-hmm. Show she was an attorney. Mm-hmm. She was very pro women all day, every day. Yeah, she she you know she had her hoes on the side, but they were all guys. She was like, no, uh-uh, I'm it's me, it's me only. So I think that's where you know what he meant by. But this but woman listen, when Kyle when Kyle first started dating them dating her on a serious tip, she all that she melted away. Absolutely, all that went a hundred and ten percent. Absolutely. I think a woman should be looking for a leader in a man, and she mm. won't turn on that femininity until she finds her leader. You can mm-hmm. still be, you can still be strong, independent. You know, you can still be mm-hmm. all those things as a woman, and mm. not have to diminish your light at all. You just have to find a man who can accept that, who can yep. bring all that in, and you not have yep. to shrink. My wife don't have to shrink for nothing. And sometimes it's not even a leadership role. Like for my wife, it's just protection. Like I'm always gonna be her protector. I'm I'm always telling her, look, there is no superior role in this relationship. I said, I'm here to protect you. I'm here now. Obviously, when we have arguments, I'm like, you know, all right, all right. you know, I never, I'm always yeah. lose, you know, losing it. But see, that's what makes you a good leader, though. You know, as the leader of your household, you might not feel like it, but the mm-hmm. small decisions you make ultimately leads to a successful relationship when you know when to pick a battle mm-hmm. your missus might not your uh-huh. missus might be ready to go every single time and you know when to concede that's when a good leader does you know mm-hmm. when your wife needs a hug she might not tell you she might not come up to you but you just know and that hug can change her whole day yeah. you're a leader you're a leader and it might not feel like there's a hierarchy in your household that's because you're smart you're mm-hmm. smart. You're you're a lovable person. You're you're someone who looks like they pay attention yeah, yeah. to. Oh, keep come keep on, let me give him his flowers. Let me give it to him. Let me give it to him. You gotta understand. Anton is a very mature thinker. He's a very very mature thinker. And the fact that he says that there's no leader in his household even proves that to the even proves that even more. Yeah, he's a leader. I see it every day in him. Every time I see him, he makes the right decision. And yeah, that's what his wife sees in him. Ah, oh, shut up. You still you still think Sid is talented. Anyway. <laughs> well, I'm not thinking you want to come with me. I'm going to take now, you to see one of the shows. Back, and now we're back on <laughs> Hampton Rose, I'm going to be like Ciroc. I got a birthday. It's a surprise, though. It's a surprise. Unless he booked me for 30 minutes, I ain't showing up. <laughs> you say you wasted your money. But so. before you say something, Michelle, so the perfect analogy I have in... I do this as far as business too. Um, if say I'm a spaceship or a ship in general, if I can dock at your port without shrinking my ship, mm-hmm. then I can love you. I can work with you. We can mm-hmm. proceed to do whatever mm-hmm. we want to do together, regardless of the type of relationship I'm Mars, I'm talking about. Major. Whatever relationship I'm talking about, I'm Mars, talking about business, major. relationship, anything. If I don't have to shrink. I can be perfectly at home. Mm-hmm. Michelle, you are a very, very powerful woman. I don't I don't know too much about who you was in the past. And to me, it sounded like she was a whole ass person. But you now, mm-hmm. I can't even see you now versus the you in the past in the same room without you playing her. Like, ugh, get this brought away. That's how I feel. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to shrink around me though. You ain't never, you don't you'll never have to feel like, man, let me. Let me put myself in a smaller so I fit into this mode. You came into in your city. You were you. You tested this out a little bit. And then you was like, all right, this is how big my ship actually is. And no mm-hmm. one said pipe down. Not Cam, yeah. not, not Aaronton, not me. No one said shrink. That's what a good man, a strong, real man is supposed to be like. I absolutely he, you just got to be able to pull up, <laughs> pull up, be you, and be loved. And as long as they fuck with you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll stop my rant. Yeah, you're good. I was just going to add to it. I also think that in a lot of circles, the three of us talking about the us men, we're the exception. We're not the rule. Like, we don't have fragile masculinity. You know what I'm saying? So we Are we the minority? I think think so. Honestly, as much as I've dated in my lifetime, yeah, y'all are definitely very different in how you think because... You're saying, you're basically saying, you know, I would lead my woman with love. 
as opposed to, you know, I've had kind of two different types of relationships. One is I have to do everything. I have to pay for everything. I have to emotionally help this person deal with everything. And I mean, like day to day, they can't handle even the smallest things. I'm the problem solver. I'm the provider. I'm, I'm, I cook. I do the laundry. I take care of the kids. I've been that role. And it took going through for years. For your kids. Yeah, I did it for my kids. Oh, so I thought we were years. talking about, I'm sorry, I thought we were talking about like relationships for men. No, I'm, well, I'm talking about relationships with men. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, oh, relationships I've been in. You were his parent. Where I, yes, where I was the mom. I basically was the mom. And the problem with that is it turned me very masculine in the relationship to the point where I would be to a point and be like, go clean your shit up. Like, can you go pick this stuff up off the floor? Like, I'm not a maid. And it, it, I didn't like how that turned me because yeah. you're right. It pulled me away from being able to be feminine. And I didn't trust that person. I didn't think they would protect me. And to be honest with you, we thought somebody broke in one night and the, the motherfucker told me to go downstairs with the gun. To that level. I'm just telling you the truth, that I, what I've experienced. You won't and, say a name. You won't say a name. I, I don't want her to say a name. I'm uncomfortable right now. I'm about to add him on Instagram. You won't say a name. <laughs> <laughs> man said, shit, you hear that? Um, and I'm just like, hey, babe, you hey, babe what you going to do? What you <laughs> I literally was like, how are you? And of course, the relationship didn't work. And any relationship oh, I've no, been in it, like it that. Died it died with that loud noise. It died. <laughs> That's when it, it was really over. It really died. But, you know, and I've been with people who are very masculine to the point of you're not going to go here you're not going to do this and i know that's not for me either because i'm mm. like again that's good i'm going to have to shrink myself my glow to make you feel better about yeah you know who you are or who you're not but then you guys are on a different level obviously there's like accountability you expect the women that you're with to have independence and have you know self-respect and to you know, to, to have their own life even away from you without, you know, it's not going to affect no. how you guys do in business. But you're saying what you're saying is doing it in a loving way. I yeah. do believe and you can personally, still... every woman wants that. I want a man who's a leader. I just want a man who's not going to hurt me and traumatize me to get me to be under him. Submit. Yeah. 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 And for, for me, Michelle, I mean, and I can, you know, I, I can speak for myself. I've always been that person based on, um, I'm a mama's boy. You know, I'm, I'm raised by, I was raised by women. I had my mom, I had uh, my grandmother, my, my aunts. I mean, it's just, that's, that was, those were my, you know, the, the leaders at the you, time. My father's in my life too, but. You know what's trying. funny though? You, you saying that is a direct con contradiction of what uh, mainstream social media and mainstream media oh. projects mm -hmm. saying that, you know, women can't raise men because they come out, you know, feminine or whatever. Hate, da, 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 da. I've, I've, I've but I'm the same way. I'm, I'm the same way. I didn't, I didn't have, I don't know my dad at all. Like, I don't know my dad at all. Like, I can't spot him in the Million Man March. Uh, I was raised by my mom and influenced heavy by my aunts. Um, these were not masculine women at all. Now, were they strong, scary women? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> man, these women are scary. Each of my aunts, I felt like, could box me up three times over <laughs> until I hit, like, the Marine Corps. It wasn't until I had to get trained. <laughs> 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 to then, even then, I felt like if two like, of them jumped right, me. All right, now. <laughs> yeah. all right I can now. take one. I can take maybe my mom. And one of the older aunts, but I can't take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these women have always been strong leaders in my life, and I don't feel like I'm. I don't know. I called Cam sexy the other day, but I don't feel like I'm the the uh, most feminine that, man in the world. How'd you feel about that, Cam? How'd you feel when he called you sexy? Oh, I blocked it out until he he just brought it up again. Oh, uh, right. yeah, you just shut up. You know I called you sexy. We had a whole thing. Now I'm about to go back to the clips, and now I'm about to post it on our official page of us yelling at each other. <laughs> hey, hey, look, family, family. I hate to be the uh, the uh, bearer of bad news. I have got to go like right now. Um, yeah, yeah. I, know, we, 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 I, I apologize. I apologize because it always gets great when I get to sit down and talk with y'all. Um, it's my fault. I got on like late, late, late. We gonna end it right now. We can end yeah. it. Oh, 
let me when you do leave, oh. let me don't leave nowhere, uh, Cam and Michelle, because I got this story about this break in that we had, and it'll be it's hilarious for y'all. It's <laughs> okay. Oh All right, y'all. I'm about to be out. All right. He's still here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go, we had a person. So you know my truck was vandalizing everything, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So before that, we heard some noises outside, and we thought people were either trying to break in the house or mess with the truck again. And um, so I, we heard the noise. Everybody got scared. I turned on my light. I grabbed the shotgun. And I walked outside, and you know I'm like clearing the areas. So I'm like, I cleared the house, like in like some FBI SWAT type stuff. I cleared the house, mm -hmm. cleared the storage room in the back, and then I went to the front and started clearing my yard and my side of my house. I walked around the whole thing, neighborhood, everything. The only thing problem is, um, I sleep naked, 100% <laughs> naked. So the cameras in the house picks me up, and oh, I have. <laughs> I have a 12 gauge in my hand, like, <laughs> and I'm walking through the house, dick just swinging. <laughs> I'm outside, no shoes, no nothing. I only have a shotgun and my wedding ring going. That is it. Just, just and I'm like... just outside, and I'm yelling. I'm not even being quiet. I'm like, hey, we can fucking play. Like... <laughs> And I'm all through. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to just hang a robe up inside your bedroom Yo, somewhere, just a quick grab. That's a millisecond grab. that could. That's a millisecond yeah. I don't have. That's a millisecond. Your neighbors, <laughs> neighbors were like, "Oh shit, they're pl they're Man. playing." Man, they night. probably thought I was on some crack. They probably thought I was yeah. on some serious. A naked skinny black yeah. man with a shotgun walking around their house yelling. Naked. Yeah, that's a problem. You lucky the cops weren't called on you. Shit. I, I I wasn't doing nothing against the law. I was. <laughs> I feel like the justice system has failed yeah. in that. Because <laughs> that should. Clearly Sir, you need to be placed on probation. You can definitely stand naked in your backyard if you want. All right. Well, I guess we got to wrap it up, man. We got it's with oh, one forty. I got to tell you something before tomorrow. Oh, it's go ahead. Important. Well, let's wrap the show up, though. Oh, oh, well, yeah, we'll wrap the show up. Don't give them the juice. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no. Uh, well, All right. Rock, rock, you wrap it up. Yeah. Close it up. All right, y'all. Yeah. Another podcast. It was amazing. All the lists. Y'all know where we fought to follow us on, especially if you're listening to this portion of the show. I mean, hell, we've been on air for about 140, what, an hour, 46 minutes. That's a long-ass time to be <laughs> listening to us and not knowing where to follow us. So make sure you follow us on all our social medias, especially in your city, too, where we get to ask questions and y'all answer them. Or you can ask, ask us questions. We answer them on the air. All right? Hot 91, the soul of VA. It's in your city. We love y'all. Out. We out. We're going to end up.